Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's go Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse say hi or say hi back. Subscribe to our vlogging channel, Fanny and Jesse 2.0. And yeah, just enjoy the content that we put out. We're very, very grateful for your support. Hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. Motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just give me the name or the link down below and I'll be sure to check it out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Freely Speaking with Jenna Lewis, Sheikh Ami Didat, one of nine. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. <laughs> listeners to Freely Speaking will remember that we had the privilege a year or so ago of interviewing in Geneva Sheikh Al-Hajj Ahmed Didat, who is president of the IPCI, that's the Islamic Propagation Center International, in Durban, South Africa. And it was amazing for me, some of my Islamic friends in Geneva had called and said you were coming, and I didn't know this existed, I did not know about you. And it was very interesting to have our first conversation together. So since time has passed, and I am now in Durban myself, I would like to bring our audience into your center and hear you speak from your heart about your center, Islam in general, and then we'll expand out. You are Europe. most welcome. You are most welcome. Thank you, you very much audience. for letting us come. So let's start about Durban and Islam. How did it come here? To Muslims that touched the shores of South, Southern, South Africa were Muslims who were brought here by the Dutch. You see, when the Dutch people conquered Indonesia, those Muslims were fighting for their freedom. They were captured as prisoners of war and they were shipped to the Cape of Good Hope and sold to the white men as slaves. <clears throat> then when the British conquered Malaysia, those Malays, Muslims, were fighting for their freedom. They were also captured as prisoners of war and they were also shipped to the Cape of Good Hope, Good Hope for the white men, and sold to the white men as slaves. For 300 years, those early Muslims, first Muslims, have touched these shores and they have it under pressure from the Christians to Christianize them. But after 300 years of hammering, that group of people, they have become one of the most militant Muslim communities in the world. That hammering, instead of softening them, had hardened them as steel. Now you see, when you say they have become one of the most militant groups of Muslims. Again, my Christian background forces me to ask, militant towards whom and to what? Because if one, there's one thing that Christianity and Islam have in common, it's that everybody is fighting everybody yes. everywhere. Yes. So who is militant to whom in Islam around here? Yes. No, it's the militancy is in its defense, because they were under pressure, under attack. You see, the white man managed to change his names, surnames. They are almost all these people that are called Malays in this country today. Malays. They're called Malays. Aha. Malays, like Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Malays. Though they were originating in Indonesia and in Malaysia, they are all called Malays. Mm -hmm. right. Now, that community of people, you see, because they were under pressure, the defense mechanism was also uh, it was not as soft. They were militant in the defense. Mm -hmm against the Christian missionaries. Yes. And that, that, that type of psychology remained with them. That was the one group of Muslims. And the, another group of Muslims came from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent. Now, they came to this country because they were starving yes. in India. Uh -huh. So they came looking for a livelihood. So they settled down in, mostly in Natal and the Transvaal, and the Malays mostly in the Cape, because that's where they were taken in the first instance. I see. So the white men managed to change the names of these people. They all carry Western names. Like you'll find a Muslim name, it's a Yusuf Hendricks. 
Abdullah, Fenter. So what is Fenter? What is Hendrix? What is Smith? So he says, no, 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 no. These were our slave masters. They carried the names of the slave masters. Exactly as in America. Exactly the same Same thing happened here. Yes. But now with this difference, the 300 years of hammering that the Afro-Americans uh, received in, in America, it chained them all to Christianity. This 300 years of hammering in Southern Africa <laughs> made them better Muslims than the Muslims at home. All right, then let me ask you a hard question right away, and yes. that is, if 300 years of Christians uh, hammering, hammering at the Muslims right. didn't change them, right. why would you think that 300 years now of Muslims hammering at, hammering at Christians would change them? In no, other words, no, no. I, because uh, it, the Islamic Propagation Center right, is that right. not to spread Islam correct, correct. to the it world. Is, it is. To, to the world. Including Muslims, Christians? Muslims, Jews, Christians, and to all. You expect Christians to resist for 300 no. years? No, no. You see, no? If, if the right approach is there, you see, there is an approach. The approach of the Christian missionaries and the Christians then was yeah. a harsh approach. Like what they did to the American Negroes in America, same type of treatment was given to the Muslims here. But now, one gave in because they had no, somehow, they didn't have that type of background religious background, to resist conversion. These people had, they go the Malays, mm -hmm. they had something, basic knowledge about religion, which kept them together. Now, in our approach today, you see, we are using a technique of speaking to a people, the Jews and the Christians, according to their own background and experience. The methods that were used by the Christian missionaries was, in the past, attacking Islam, attacking the Holy Prophet Muhammad, attacking the Quran, and that didn't get their honey. But we are not attacking Jesus or uh, the Christian people. What we are saying is we, are, have, we have an approach where we are calling the people, says, come, let us reason together. And in that, we say, we want to show you from your own background and experience that it was about time that you look for a person who would give you a solution to all your problems. Because we say that Jesus Christ, before he parted, he told his disciples, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now, meaning you haven't got the capacity. He had the knowledge. He had the solution to our problems for eternity. Who Jesus Christ is the mighty, as a man of God, as a mighty messenger of God, as a Messiah, he had answers to all your problems. Mm -hmm. But the people to whom he was addressing, they were incapable of receiving that message. So he says, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Now we Muslims, we are claiming that that spirit of truth, or that comforter, as prophesied by Jesus, is Muhammad, and he is giving you a solution to all your problems. Those solutions might not go down well, because we are all used to certain ways of living, thinking. But if you sit and reason, these are solution to your problems, whatever problem you have. For example, in South Africa, the biggest problem we have is race. And throughout the world, the biggest problem of mankind is racism. Mm -hmm. And Islam not only speaks about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. It gives you a solution to your problem, how to solve it. It lays out a system. Whereas everybody else talks, fatherhood of God, there is but one Lord, He created us all, and we are all His children. That is talk. But how to create that brotherhood? In Islam, we have a system. Mm -hmm. Now the system is, you see, five times a day, the Muslim is made to come together in what is called Salat, prayer. Uh -huh. So when they gather together in the mosque, uh -huh. they use the same taps for ablution, they use the same towels for wiping the faces, and they stand shoulder to shoulder, no gaps left between the rich and the poor, the black and the white, or whatever. They all must stand shoulder to shoulder. Because the Holy Prophet Muhammad he said that when you stand up for prayer, you must not leave gaps for the devil to get in between you and your brother. Now the devil he was talking about 
was not the guy we see in the art gallery in Durban. If you go to the museum complex, you see there uh, in the art gallery beautiful paintings by great artists. Among them, there is one huge painting of a beautiful woman with wings. And she's got a wand in her hand. A that magic wand, W A N D. A wand. A wand. wand in her hand. As if, and she's directing the devil in the picture. You can see. She's directing the devil to go to hell. And you can see hell in the distance. And you see this devil with horns, mm -hmm. with sharp ears, and a tail with a barbed hook, mm -hmm. with a ruddy complexion, mm -hmm. fiery himself. And he's flying off also towards hell. An interesting conversation. Um, I love the way, I really, really love and appreciate the way Ami did that was answering questions, you know. Uh, he's acknowledging that people are different. People are going to have different approaches to how they want to solve things, you know, and change may not be so easy to accept, you know. And that's what I really, really love about him. And concerning how the Malays found themselves in Cape of Good Hope, um, that's always um, it's nice all to learn something new each and every day. You never know this history because it's not going to be spoken about, you know. And uh, when it comes to race, race is really a big issue. And I love the fact that Muslims are coming together through prayer. It doesn't matter who you are, what position you have, who your family is. You're all one when it comes to pray you know that's your brother that's your sister that's the to get the togetherness many of us um are admiring and uh, let me know what you guys actually think what do you think about this um interview what do you have to say what are your thoughts let me know down below if there's anything you want me to react to give me the name or the link down below and i'll be sure to check it out make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video